Hi everyone. Now I know it's been a while since my last video, but I wanted you to know that I've dedicated part of my schedule for video production. So hopefully we'll get more videos out to you in a more timely manner. What I want to do today is talk about box joints. Now the box joint, sometimes called the finger joint, is probably the most popular and widely used joint for drawer construction and box making. Aesthetically, it has a very nice look and structurally it is very strong. So today, I'm going to show you a very easy method in making very accurate box joints. I like this method because it doesn't require any fancy jigs. It's fast, simple, yet very accurate. And the best part about it, it costs next to nothing to make. All you need is a piece of plywood and some hardwood scrap. So let's go on out to the shop and make some box joints. To make our jig, basically what we're doing is to cut a slot using our dado so that we can insert our spacer. Now before I do that, I want to explain a couple of things. Today I'm going to be making a drawer using 5 8 Baltic Birch. When making drawers, I use 3 8 of an inch dado set almost exclusively. There's a couple of reasons. One, aesthetically I like the look proportion wise. And two, it works out mathematically for what I wanted to do. Especially when I'm cutting the grooves for my drawer bottoms. Now I'm going to show and explain that when we get to that part. Also, when I'm making custom, say, kitchen cabinets, the first drawer on top is usually what we call a six inch drawer. That means that the drawer front is actually six inches. So the opening is usually five with a half inch overlay that would cover the hole. I like to make my drawers one inch smaller than the opening so they would accommodate for the hardware and also room for clearance. So with a four inch drawer, mathematically it's perfect because it gives me perfect symmetry. So the first thing we need to do is to set the height of the blade. And that is determined by the material you'll be using. I'm just going to grab a piece for my drawer, lay it right next to the blade, and I want to raise my blade so that it'll be protruding about a 30 seconds of an inch. Right about here. That looks good. And uh, we're ready to cut. So I'm just going to eyeball this and cut it close to center. The next step is to cut our spacer to fit into our slot. From experience, I want my spacer to be about four thousandths of an inch smaller than my opening. It makes moving my piece from finger to finger while I'm cutting a little easier. It won't be so tight. Now I'm using a 3 8 inch uh, dado set. So my opening should read 0.375, but when I put my caliber to this, it's actually reading 0.365. That's ten thousandths of an inch less. Now why is that? Well, the teeth of the blades are an eighth of an inch, but the body is a little bit thinner because of the set. We need that because if the body was the same thickness as the teeth, well that's a lot of metal that's rubbing against your piece of wood while you're cutting. It makes it very difficult and also very dangerous. Now the manufacturer understands that and that's why this dado set comes with these magnetic shims. And here I have one that actually says a ten thousandths of an inch. Now I can insert this and bump it out to be 0.375. Now I'm not going to do that just to show you that the tooling does not have to be perfect or that you have to buy the same brand of dado set that I use. And that's the beauty of this method. It really doesn't matter if our tooling is a little bit different. It's okay because I'm going to show you a simple adjustment that will make our joints turn out exactly how we want it. Hopefully perfect. To make the spacer, there's two cuts. There's the height and also the width. I'm going to cut the height first. I know it's about 5 eighths of an inch because of my stock. I want to cut a little bit smaller than that because if my spacer is sticking out from the bottom, well it's going to teeter-totter like this when I try to set up. So I'm going to set my fence to about a 30 seconds of an inch smaller and make my first cut. So this is where I might have a slight advantage. Here at the school we have multiple table saws. So I'm going to leave my setup alone. I'm going to go to another table saw to cut my spacer. So if this is the only table saw that you have, then you just got to change your blade a couple of times. It's no big deal. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Kind of sucks, huh? Thank you. 
So for my width, remember I want to cut it four thousandths of an inch smaller than my opening, which measures 0.365. So my target is going to be 0.361. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set my fence to about three eighths, make my cut, see how much I'm off, and then tap my fence over. So my caliber reads 0.391, which is 30 thousandths of an inch too big. I'm going to set my caliber down. Whatever the reading is, I'm going to tap it over 30 thousandths. Now I'm ready to make my cut. And let's see what we get. Perfect. Now that I got this cut to size, I'm just going to cut a little piece off with my spacer. So before I glue up my spacer, I want to chamfer the top two edges. It just makes it a little easier to go from cut to cut. When you're gluing up, make sure that the spacer does not stick out from the bottom or from the back. Well, I think we're ready to make some box joints. Now, this is the most important part, the adjustment. Again, from experience, I found that using plywood to make box joints, I want the fingers to be about five to six thousandths of an inch smaller than my opening. Now I made a few samples here to show you the fit for different tolerances. Here I have a zero, meaning that the fingers were exactly the same size as my opening. And as you can see, it's a little bit tight. Now I can probably drive it home with a mallet, but after I apply glue, it would just be way too tight. So I thought, well, what happens if I make a three thousandths of an inch smaller? So again, it's a little bit better, but still a little bit tight for my taste. So I also made one that's four thousandths of an inch smaller and then I also made one that's five thousandths and six thousandths of an inch smaller. And I found that, well, six thousandths seems to work the best for me. There is no gap. Even if when you apply glue to it, it works just fine. Also, if I had to choose between the five and the six thousandths, I would probably err on the six. But the five thousandths of an inch smaller would work just fine. Now I know some of you will be asking, why am I so anal about these measurements that I have to get it to within a thousandth of an inch? Well, when it comes to joinery, you have to. Back in the days when I was running a production shop, I had three people working here for me. So that means I have to make payroll every other week, no matter if I make money or not. So I'm constantly looking for ways to increase production and at the same time, cut production time and costs. And one of the problem areas is um, assembling of drawers. Sometimes the joints will be so tight that we will either break or crack our drawers when using a mallet. And that costs us time and money because we have to remake some of these. So I use caliber mainly for speed. If it only takes me a minute to make an adjustment and it will save me hours of frustration, it just makes sense to do it. I would never spend an hour to get within a thousandth of an inch and it would do me no good. It's just a big waste of time. So a caliber tells me exactly how much I'm off so that I can make the proper adjustment. It's all about speed and just getting the job done. All right, so I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set our jig perfectly to meet our tolerance. Remember, I want the fingers of my box joints to be about five to six thousandths of an inch smaller than my opening, which is 0.365. So my target is gonna be 0.360 or 0.359. So I'm just gonna grab this piece here that we've cut off earlier for our spacer knowing that this is four thousandths of an inch smaller. So I'm just going to place it right up to here, put it against one of my teeth, and this will get me close for my first cut. Now I'm going to purposely mess it up, screw it up, so that this way it gives me a chance to show you how to bring it back in. So I'm going to clamp it, I have a test piece here, 
I'm going to use to see where I'm at. I'm going to use my caliper, take a reading, and it reads 0 0.371. So it looks like the fingers are about 11 to 12 thousandths of an inch too big. So if it's too big, what we want to do is we want to move the jig over this way into the blade so that it has a chance to remove a little bit more off. So to do that, I like to use a feeler gauge, find 12 thousandths of an inch right here, put this weight against the side of my jig, use the block, and uh, by the way, I like to have my block with a point on it, just in case my edge of my jig is not uh, perfectly square or my block is not perfectly square. So this gives a better reading. Put this up against my uh, feeler gauge. I'm going to clamp it, remove my feeler gauge. Now I have a chance to shift my jig over 12 thousandths of an inch. Okay, so I'm ready to do another test cut, and let's see what we got. Whoa, you're not, check this out, this doesn't happen very often. 0.359 and a half, split that tolerance right down the middle. Now I'm ready to make some drawers. So before I do, I like to make a uh, reference mark on all my pieces. Also, it's very important to cut the fronts and the backs of your drawers first. Now, you see what I mean when I cut the grooves for the drawer bottom. So, if these were my sides of the drawer, and these are the fronts and the backs, I'm going to cut these first. So, I'm going to set the size of the drawers over here and cut these first. So, it's very important to start with the reference mark up against the spacer for the first cut. So here we go. Reference mark goes against the spacer. Again, reference mark. Now that we've finished cutting our fronts and the backs, we're ready to cut our sides. So basically, what we're doing is to cut the negatives to match the fingers. So that means the blade has to start right at the edge. So I have to line this piece right to the tip of the blade, like that. So that means I need a spacer between my blade and my stop. Remember our first cut of the drawer front? Right here? This finger is the perfect spacer. All we have to do is flip this one around like this. So basically, reference mark to reference mark, and this will be our first cut. So when I'm cutting, the blade will not touch my drawer front here, but will start right on the edge. So here we go. Remember the reference mark.
Well, I think I'm ready to do a dry fit. So the first thing I want to do is line all my pieces up with the reference mark facing up. Just like this. So um, I hope it fits. This is the moment of truth. Oh man, my hands are shaking. You know, to be honest with you, right now, I'm more nervous than Mike Tyson in his spelling bee. Oh, that fits really nice. Okay, well there you have it. If you look closely at the drawer top here, it all lines up perfectly. So to cut the grooves for my drawer bottoms, I like to use a table saw rather than a router table. For me, the table saw is much faster, especially when I'm batching out a whole bunch of drawers. And besides, I don't want to have to listen to a router screaming for a few hours. I'm also using a quarter inch plywood. Now you know that a quarter inch is never a quarter of an inch. It's always a little bit smaller. So by using a table saw, I can dial it in for my second cut to give it a nice custom fit. Now the blade that I'll be using it's a flat top blade. It's made by Forrest. It's a woodworker tool with a number one grind. You can make multiple passes and it will be absolutely smooth and flat. There is no scoring mark. This is the blade that I use for all my joinery and also in my joinery class. So if you're interested in this blade, you can go to my website. I think it's in my online store under power tools. So the blade right now is set to a quarter of an inch plus a 30 seconds for some clearance. I'm going to set the fence to half inch because I'll be using the Blum tandem slice and that's what is required, a half inch from the bottom. I'm going to make my cuts on all my drawer parts first and then I'm going to dial it in for my second cut. So I'm going to take apart my drawer but I want to make sure that all my reference marks will be up against the fence for my first cut. Now for my second cut, I'm not going to use a caliber on this because it's really not that critical. I'm just going to take my drawer bottom, place it right on my groove, and just see how much I'm off. I'm just going to tap it over until it fits. Now you can use a scrap piece and use that to test it out before you make your final cut. But it's really not that critical. It doesn't have to be perfect. So here we go. Right there. That's your perfect fit. Okay, now I can run everything through. Okay, I'm going to assemble my drawers. So remember earlier I said I'll explain and show you why I use 3 8 of an inch dado set and why I cut the fronts and the backs of the drawers first? Well, you see these holes here? That's from cutting the grooves for my drawer bottoms. But when you install your drawer front, that will cover the holes. And that's why I cut the fronts and the backs of my drawers first. And from the side, you won't see any holes. And that's because using 3 8 of an inch dado set, it works out perfect mathematically. So I hope you like and enjoy the video. If you do, share with a friend. 
And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I promise I'll get more videos out to you. So until then, thanks for watching.